Okay, hello everybody. Have a good one. Be welcome. Thank you for coming and joining in today's class. Let's see. Vamos a comenzar. We are going to take a look for the last time in this week the versicle. Pay attention because for this week the word was wisdom. We learn about wisdom and we have Proverbs 2 6 for the Lord give wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Okay, as you remember. Recordarán, hemos estado viendo las diferentes traducciones de este versículo. Y ya hemos comentado respecto a la palabra Lord, ¿verdad? Que es como la, lo que prefieren para referirse al nombre de Dios. Eh, cuando se encuentra, digamos, eh, la palabra, digamos, el tetragramatón. O lo que vendría siendo eh, la palabra Jehová, que normalmente vamos a encontrar en las... En las Biblias en español, ¿verdad? Eh, se sustituye. Pero también destacábamos el uso de give, ¿verdad? Del verbo give y del verbo come. Y que, pues, eso nos habla de que básicamente Dios es el que da la sabiduría y que de él también proviene el conocimiento. Algunos eh, autores agarran el, la palabra knowledge and understanding. Otros hemos visto que hacen pequeños cambios, ¿verdad? Uno que eh, eh, cambiaba una de ellas por province, que sería prudencia. Eh, otros que nos decían lo del common sense, ¿verdad? Como la contemporary English, la de sentido común. Eh, y nos habíamos quedado en esta parte, ¿verdad? Ya prácticamente las habíamos visto todas, incluyendo esas que no tienen el vocablo de Lord, sino que aparece Jehová o aparece Yahweh. <coughs> en otras ocasiones hemos dicho que en Bible Hub, ya en la parte final, encontramos los comentarios, ¿verdad? Hay comentarios de un par de autores que tratan de explicar, digamos, o de hacernos eh, alguna concordancia con algunos otros eh, pasajes que hablan, digamos, de algo similar o tocan un tema parecido. Eh, en este caso, ¿verdad? Eh, nos habla acerca de que Dios, ¿verdad? Aquí nos dice, The Lord Jehová is the only a true source of wisdom. Dice que es la única fuente, ¿verdad? De la sabiduría desde este punto de vista. Eh, ahora, más adelante encontramos la, eh, el comentario Strong, que a diferencia de ese otro tipo de comentario, que es como una explicación, Strong va más word by word, ¿verdad? Palabra por palabra, indicándonos qué significa. Eh, y toma alguna de las versiones, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, aquí tenemos for, que vendría siendo, recuerden que lo que aparece aquí escrito es Hebrew, es hebreo, ¿verdad? Esto es el lenguaje hebreo. Nos dice que es una conjunción y Strong tiene numeradas cada palabra que aparece en la Biblia. Ya sea del Old Testament o del New Testament. Y nos dice pues que es una conjunción. Luego the Lord nos dice que es el noun, es un proper noun, eh, que es el nombre de Dios. The proper name of God of Israel, ¿ok? Y luego gives, que sería un bird, nos dice que es third person, for masculine singular, eh, la acción de dar, eh, poner en alguien, ¿verdad? Incluso otorgar a alguien algo. Eh, wisdom, que es la palabra que hemos estado examinando, nos dice que en ese caso es um, femenino, ¿verdad? En, en, en inglés, la sabiduría, igual que en español, wisdom. Luego nos habla de from his mouth, ¿verdad? De su boca. Eh, que es para referirse, pues, a que de allí viene, ¿verdad? El, el, eh, el knowledge que aparece por acá. Come knowledge, en este caso hay algo curioso y es que knowledge, the knowledge en inglés es femenino. Nosotros lo vemos como el conocimiento, lo vemos como, como, como male y no como female, para ellos es female. Understanding es otra situación que diríamos eh, el entendimiento, diríamos nosotros, pues para ellos podría ser más un vocablo femenino que apunta a ser sinónimo de intelligence Or it may be an argument. Well, that's going to be all. Con eso cerraríamos entonces esta semana este versículo. Y vamos a trabajar ahora con nuestro topic. Ayer nos quedaron pendientes unos ejercicios, ¿verdad? We are going to continue. Eh, vamos a, a continuar acá. Eh, con lo que vendría siendo eh, estas, eh, estos ejercicios, ¿verdad? Tenemos el primero que nos dice... dice Choose the correct option. Bien, aquí debemos de escoger si vamos a trabajar con simple present o si vamos a trabajar con present progressive. Pay attention because the key to get 
the correct answer is to pay attention to the complement. If in the complement there is some words like right now, in this moment, at the moment, now, that means that we have to use present progressive tense. But in the complement of one of these sentences, we are going to find something like a daily routine or just a routine. We have to use simple present. Okay, let's get started with it. Number one, the doctor. Okay, we have two options. We have works or is working in the local hospital. Now, tell me, what is the correct? Works or is working? Is working. Is working. It's correct. Very nice because it's right now. It's in this moment. Well, go to number two. Michael. Shopping with her father on Saturdays. What is that correct? Goes or is going? Goes. Is goes because this is a daily routine. It's, well, it's not a daily. It's uh, for all Saturdays, they go shopping. Remember, go shopping is simple present. Shopping is not, in this case, is not the verb. Well, let's see the next. Roberto, catch the bus in the morning. We have two options, catches or is catching? Catching. Yes. Okay. Coaches. Coaches, that correct, it is another daily routine. That means that every morning, every morning, maybe from Monday to Friday, Roberto coaches the bus. Okay, well, and for this, we have to remember something about uh, difference between um, American and British English. We have this expression, coach the bus is for uh, UK English. Americans say, take the bus. This is for American. Take the bus, catch the bus. Okay. Catch the bus and take the bus. Very nice. Go to number four. Number four. The girl often drink is the verb, but what we are going to use, drinks for simple person tense, or is drinking for present progressive tense? Tell me. Drinks. Drinks. Excellent. Because it is a daily routine. Remember, when we use always, never, often, uh, sometimes, usually, whatever, they are frequency adverbs. That means that if we are going to use in a sentence as a frequency adverb, we have to use simple present tense. Okay, go to number five. Take a look for this. It's 9 p.m. and my family has or is having. Is having. Is having. Very nice. It's present progressive tense. It's like to say in this moment, right now, the time is 9 o'clock p.m. This is in the present. Okay? That means that we are going to use is having dinner. And pay attention one more time. My family having, having, okay? And here we have has. If maybe, if we can say, um, my, fa my family always has dinner at 9 p.m. That is in full present tense, but pay attention because family is like one it, it's like it, third person, and we have to use has. But in this case, it is not simple present tense, it is present progressive. Go to number six. Clear. Okay. Is finishing or it finishes her lesson at two quarter p.m.? Finishes. Excellent. Thank you. It's simple present tense, daily routine. One more time, okay? Number seven, Paula and you, the new magazine now. We have the option, are reading, read. Tell me what is the correct. 
a reading. A reading is now, in this precious moment. Okay, very nice. Thank you for your participation. We complete this exercise. Okay, well, uh, let's go to the next. Uh, somebody has some question? Hay alguien que estaba marcando por ahí, tiene alguna pregunta? No? Okay. Let's go into continue. Vamos a continuar. Uh, get to the second part. We have in the instruction, write the verse in present simple or continuous. Okay, present simple or continuous. Well, um, one more time, we have to choose if we are going to use, for example, with the, adding the AS, the ES, or IES, or in the form with the verb to be and one verb in ING form. Well, let's go to the first one. In the first one, we have Catherine, and the verb is work. In the form in summer. Tell me, what do we have to use here? Works. Works, okay, in the form in summer. Okay, very nice. I'm going to explain something about these sentences because if we don't have uh, any context, maybe we can get um, a, a bad uh, answer for this one. Okay, vamos a, a dejar acá el, el works. Vamos a usar otro. Este color no usando problema. Se mira bien. Okay, las voy a poner en black. Bye. Esta oración puede dar lugar a cierta ambigüedad porque podríamos usarla con presente simple o presente continuo, pero dependerá del contexto en el que la pongamos. Por ejemplo, si la dejamos como pensando en present simple, significa que Catherine every summer, todos los veranos, trabaja en una granja. Eso significa que todos los veranos ella va a esa granja a trabajar. Entonces se vuelve una routine. Pero también podríamos decir, Catherine is working in the farm in summer. Pero quizás ahí es donde viene la situación. Porque tendríamos que decir, in the farm next summer. Eh, y tendríamos que estar en una época donde el verano esté por llegar. Porque hemos dicho que el otro uso que tiene el presente continuo es para indicar acciones que estamos seguros que van a ocurrir en un futuro inmediato. Bien. Ahorita no podríamos decir esta oración en presente continuo porque acaba de terminar el summer y los cambios de clima que estamos experimentando ahorita aquí en nuestro país en parte tienen que ver porque ya llegó el autumn o el fall a los países como los United States o como England. Entonces tendríamos que estar... Digamos, allá quizás por June, posiblemente en junio, en June, en, en July quizás, para decir esta oración con presente continuo, porque está cerca la época. Bien. Well, that's all. Go to number two. John, often we have go to bed. Go, tell me. Go. Goes, okay, very nice, because it's a daily routine. John often go to bed too late on Saturdays. Number three, Alan usually, and the verb is brush. Tell me. Alan usually. <laughs> Brushes, brush. nice. Brushes her his teeth. Well, number four. And they and we have run to catch the bus now. Uh, running. Very nice. Thank you, Patricia. Is are running. They are running to catch the bus now. And remember, catch the bus is is. Normally for uh, British, to say this for British. Okay. 
the chins. Okay, very nice. Let's go to number five. Zara hate. Hate. Sarah hates. Okay, eating sap. Pay attention for these sentences. Is not a present continuous eating. In this case, we are going to make a translation to Spanish when we say Sarah hates eating sap. Maybe uh, like uh, that's always. That is normally for her. Okay, is is something that every time she hates. To eat, to eat sup or having sup. Okay. Well, um, the next number six, my cousin, and the verb is leave. Leave. Pay attention for the rest of the sentences. It says in San Francisco at the moment. Is leaving. It's leaving. Is is leaving. Okay. My cousin is living in San Francisco at the moment. Okay, very nice. Number seven, some teachers. And we have, in this case, the verb correct. But pay attention to the expression right now. are correcting excellent that's correct some teachers are correcting well, next, next we have number eight number eight we have, uh, okay let's see lucia sometimes Okay, Lucia sometimes, and the verb is pre participate. Okay, participate. Tell me what we have to use. Yes, yeah, sometimes participates. Okay, we let it S. Participates. Well, one more, number nine. The photographer always take is the verb. Okay. Take. Takes. Takes. Excellent. Always takes nice photos. Okay. Go to number 10. Lucas. The verb is direct. Directing. Okay. Is is direct, directing the new field now? Okay. And here we have another in, uh, interesting word because remember about this. Um, I'm going to use another size. Uh, film. Uh, film is for United Kingdom. American people say it's movie. Movie. For USA. Um, well, number 11, listen, they are playing. Very nice. Progressive one more time. They are playing. Okay, very good. They are playing your favorite song. And here we have another clue about get the difference between the spelling in this case for American and British English. Remember that word, they with the diphthong O, in writing, in the writing, it, uh, favorite is for United Kingdom. People in USA write this with just with O, favorite, favorite, USA, okay. 
Very nice. I'm going to take the screenshot for you. Okay, there is it. And we complete this exercise. Thank you for your participation. They are very important to me because I know you are learning in a correct way this topic. Okay, let's go to the to another exercise. We have time for another exercise. Well, um, let's go here. Pay attention for this. We are at the park. Some people are at the park and you are going to thinking like we are uh, watching these people in this moment, but now, okay? And you can take a look for some people reading. Uh, he is riding a bike. We can say, hey, they are sitting in the bench. They are buying uh, ice cream. They are playing basketball. Um, they are doing um, snow um, like uh, roller braiding. Um, we have some people here, um, one father and maybe the daughter, and uh, they are uh, walking the dog, and, and this guy is just sitting in the bench. And well, there is many people doing different things. And the, we have some animals over here. You can take a look, for example, there is uh, one squirrel. Here we have one squirrel. There is another squirrel. Here we have one dog. Here we have another dog and some birds. Okay, well, what we are going to do? We have to complete, change the verse in brackets into present continuous tense. Okay, let's read it. The weather is beautiful. It's a sunny day. The park is full of people, some children, and the bird is play. What do we have to say here? Some children are playing. That's correct. Some children are playing. Okay, very nice. Basketball happily. Okay, go to the next. Some children, and we have pot. Pot. Tell me, tell me. No, our children, children, plural, are? Oh, are. Are party. Okay, very nice. It's plural. Chill. She, just chill is singular, but children is plural. Well, okay. um, thank you. Some children are putting on their roller skate, the birds, and we have the word pick. Are picking. Excellent, are picking up. All right, picking up some food on the ground. Okay, picking, okay, como recogiendo, recogiendo del suelo. That is pick up. Uh, ya que nos apareció esa, tenemos que mencionar una expresión que eh, se da muchas veces, ¿verdad? En el English. En el English existe esta, esta acción pick up que como verbo, like a bird, vamos a decir recoger. Recoger es una frase verbal realmente que significa recoger algo del suelo. That is pick up. Yeah. Similar a recoger o incluso podemos decir levantar, levantar algo. Podría ser sinónimo. Pero nosotros tenemos un a little problem y es que le decimos pick up a eh, los vehículos. Entonces existe, nosotros acá usamos el término pick up así like a noun, como un nombre, para referirse a un tipo de transporte. Pero normalmente en inglés no se le dice así a ese tipo de transporte. Para ellos esto se llama un truck. Es un truck. Por eso es un camión. Sí, pero también aplica para ese tipo de vehículos. En América Latina acostumbramos a decirles pickups porque esa es la función que hacen, o sea, sirven para llevar cosas en, 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 en the bed, pero ellos no les llaman así, les llaman trucks, trucks. Eh, y incluso hay allí una, no sé si vieron un meme, pero no me acuerdo si lo guardé, pero es, es, fue en México que ocurrió eso. Eh, salió, salió un chiste y ya se hizo meme de esa cosa 
de que con eso del COVID, muchos lugares comenzaron a poner servicios de pick up, de, de que usted llega y recoge y se lleva las cosas. Bien, este, la situación es de que alguien por ahí vea, entendió que donde decía pick up era para parquear su pick up. Y ahí se fue a parquear ahí, ve, y no era eso. El propósito es que ahí usted medio se iba a estacionar para recibir las cosas que había pedido eh, pasar recogiendo, porque esa es otra forma de ver lo de pick up, como pasar recogiendo algo. Aquí en el país había una, creo que ya desapareció, ya no está esa tienda, pero recuerdo que antes había una tienda que se llamaba Pick and Save. Bien, que pues la idea de quienes le pusieron el nombre al negocio era, bueno, agarre lo que está aquí y, y save, ¿verdad? Guarde su dinero. De aquí le vendemos cheaper, más barato. Ok, let's continue. Cerramos el comercial. A girl and her father. Are having. Are having. Are having. Ok, are having. An ice cream and their puppy y su perrito. Walk. Is walking. Uh, he is walking. Ok, he is walking. Some children, and we have by. Are budging. Very nice. Are buying ice cream. Two people. Are uh, reading. Are uh, reading. Very nice. I are uh, reading under the tree. And then, man. He's sitting. He's sitting. Okay, very nice. He's sitting. Sorry. He's sitting. I can see all the animals. There are squirrels, dogs, and birds. A squirrel, and we have the word climb. Squirrel, una ardilla. Okay, is correct, is climbing, climbing down the trees. Aunque eso es como, o sea, climb lo vemos como escalar, pero realmente cuando decimos climb up es cuando va para arriba y climb down es que viene para abajo. Pero como estos animalitos ponen las clothes, ¿verdad? ponen las garras, pues lo, lo vemos como climb. Um, as the other one, hay otra más. Y we have search. Search. Tell me about this. Is. Is searching. Is, is searching for food on the bin. Okay. Uh, there are two birds. Um, Well, regálame un segundito, permítame un segundito en línea. Okay, thank you for waiting. Well, uh, we have here is um, searching for food on the bin. Well, uh, the bin is, um, here we have the bin. This is the bin. 
this is the pin. Uh, we have here one another word. Uh, pay attention for this because uh, bin it's a short way to say thrush, thrush bin. But bin and thrush bin is for United Kingdom. Americans say thrush can, thrush can. That is for Americans, thrush can. Trash bin, bin, or just um, trash can. Well, let's see the next. A woman, a try. It's trudging. It's trudging. Excellent. Is trying. Is trying. Control her dog. It's a big dog. Well, a girl, a girl. It's riding. It's riding. It's riding. It's riding her scooter. Okay, a boy, and we had cycle. It's cycling. It's cycling. Okay, this is a not common word for us in Spanish. Nosotros decimos andar en bicicleta. Cycling sería algo así como bicicletear. Pero it's not, it's not often to use this in Spanish. Is cycling down the hill. The hill is una colina. Está bajando una colina. A man. Is sitting. Is sitting. Very nice. A man is sitting on the bench. And a pigeon. Okay, this is a pigeon. Is a pigeon? is seeing okay that's correct is seeing to him well very nice we complete this loader exercise we are going to take the screenshot for you okay here we have the screenshot bueno con eso estaríamos cerrando entonces estos ejercicios eh, voy a estar compartiendo en unos minutitos un eh, google forms para un pequeña una pequeña evaluación de este tema verdad necesito sacar una nota de, de, de ese contenido que ya desarrollamos eh, así que les va a estar llegando lo pueden hacer hoy en la noche, lo pueden hacer mañana Saturday, lo pueden hacer el Sunday lo pueden hacer el Monday, eh, va a estar habilitado hasta el lunes, eh, es una evaluación cortita de lo que hemos ido viendo del ING form, se la estoy enviando en los siguientes minutos well, that's gonna be all for, to, for today thank you for staying with me it's time to say goodbye but remember, I want to see you on next class on next Tuesday. Have a great weekend. May God bless you, everybody, and take care. Bye bye. Happy weekend, teacher. Thank you. Have a good Thank you.